This is a WCCB Charlotte special report. Remembering 9-11, 20 years later. Good morning, I'm WCCB News Rising's Derek James. Today, we remember the terror attacks on America 20 years later. From Charlotte to Ground Zero, memorial ceremonies are planned this morning to honor the victims and first responders. WCCB's Lauren McDonald live at Truist Field for the 9-11 Memorial Stair Climb. Brianna Dahlquist live at Romare Bearden Park with the Flags of Remembrance. But first, video from earlier this morning when a flag was unfurled as the sun came up at the Pentagon in Arlington, Virginia, on the west side of the building where American Airlines Flight 77 struck. This is all in honor of marking 20 years since 9-11. Private ceremonies start there an hour from now. We will get to Lauren and Brianna for more coverage in just a few minutes. First, we go to WCCB Charlotte's Camila Bernal live in New York City. Good morning, Camila. It's a somber and really difficult day here in New York City. 20 years ago, lives forever changed. And today, this nation remembers those victims and stands with those families that lost so much. 20 years after the attacks that changed the nation. A plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. Americans coming together once again to mark a defining moment in history. Nearly 3,000 lives lost when four U.S. commercial airliners were turned into weapons of terror. Crashing into the Twin Towers, the Pentagon, and a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. This setting off a chain of events that would set the course for the 21st century and define a generation. A 9-11 generation stepping up to serve and protect in the face of terror. On this landmark anniversary, President Joe Biden joining former Presidents Barack Obama and George W. Bush to commemorate the occasion. No matter how much time has passed, and these commemorations bring everything painfully back. And family members of those killed, marking the passage of time and the enduring loss of loved ones. My children were seven, four, and four days old on September 11th, and now they're young adults out in the world. One's married, one's working in Brooklyn, and my youngest actually joined the military. So it just breaks my heart that he missed out on all of that. And the event here in New York is expected to begin in about 30 minutes. Already those guests that were invited are being allowed in. But the first moment of silence, that will happen at 8.46 in the morning. And that will represent the moment that that airplane crashed into the North Tower here in New York. There will be a total of six moments of silence. Four of them will represent the moment that the airplanes crashed, and two of them will represent those moments when the towers collapsed. Reporting live in New York City, I'm Camila Bernal. Camila, we'll check in with you again in uh, just a few minutes. Stephen Oakley was a fireman killed on 9-11 when the Twin Towers went down. He was one of the 343 firefighters who lost their lives that day. Every year since 2002, the Firefighter Steve Coakley Foundation arranges 2,977 flags in the shape of the World Trade Center in Romare Bearden Park in Charlotte. WCCB's Brianna Dahlquist is there now for more on the Flags of Remembrance. Good morning, Brianna. Good morning. Yes, we are at the 9-11 Flags of Remembrance, and I'm here with a special person whom I have the honor of interviewing and speaking with today, New York City's uh, battalion chief, who was actually there. Thank you so much for being here. Frank um, uh, Poulin, thank you so much for being here. So how do you feel 20 years later being here, surrounded by love? What's, what's significant about this moment for you? Thank you so much for having me here today and for uh, covering this event. Uh, it's significant to me personally because Stephen Coakley was a firefighter in my house who died on 9-11. And it's his sister Cara that puts this great event on. So personally, that's the significance for me, and that's why I come down here for that. But it's also, it was, a, it was an event that changed the world. It, it, the, the, the whole world has not been the same ever since. And uh, you can see by the 2,977 flags, everybody in the country was affected in some way, shape, or form. Everybody knew somebody that was either there or killed or has a story. And, uh, and it's just important to remember those people that we lost on that day. Absolutely. Speaking of that day, 
where were you when you got the call? And what was, because you responded, what was running through your mind when you were on the way there to the World Trade Center? So I responded from home. Before I left my house, I saw the tower was burning on the TV. Uh, I got in my car, I started heading in. While I was on my way in, the tower collapsed. Uh, I knew my company was there, uh, and my brother was working. Uh, my brother was a fireman in Ladder 8 in, low, uh, in Lower Manhattan. He was one of the first firefighters uh, in the buildings that day. So uh, while we were going in, I didn't know who was going to survive. My brother was alive, what was going on. Uh, and then somewhere along the way, my wife saw him on TV, and we knew he was alive. So that was a blessing. Uh, and I, I got in there a little bit later on before Tower 7 came down. It was just surreal. It was just a crazy, crazy day. And uh, Now, you're, I got a chance to meet your brother. Amazing man. But you also got some more brothers. Um, that you work with. It, it was a brotherhood, and losing four of those brothers, I know it means a lot to you. Talk about the brotherhood and the fondest memories working with them. Yes, so the fire department in general is, is, is a big brotherhood, uh, not just in New York City, uh, throughout the world, throughout the country. Uh, FDNY is kind of special. 217 was a great place. Uh, the guys I work with were amazing people, great people, dedicated. Uh, Steven was a work hard, play harder kind of guy. He was an awesome guy, so uh, we, we definitely miss him. But uh, the brotherhood of the fire department in general is fantastic. The days after 9-11, we didn't have the manpower to support our brothers at funerals and everything. And they literally came from all over the world. Sorry. <laughs> all over the world to support us. And uh, that's one of the things I remember the most about uh, the days after. We just didn't have the manpower. One of the biggest fire departments in the world, we didn't have the manpower to do what we normally do to, to take care of our families and everything. And they came up all over the place. So, true brotherhood. True brotherhood. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. Um, we're going to kick it back to you, Derek, but we will have more on the 9-11 Flags of Remembrance. All right, we'll see you again in a few minutes, Brianna. Climbing stairs to honor the first responders who bravely ran up into burning buildings. Lauren McDonald live at Truist Field. The Memorial Stair Climb going to be happening this morning among some other events there. Hi, Lauren. Hey, Derek. Good morning. That's right. Just moments away from the opening ceremony, which is set here for 8 15. 2,977 people lost their lives on 9 11. 413 of those people were first responders. And the message today is to never forget, even 20 years later. And someone is here to celebrate the lives of those people who made the ultimate sacrifice 20 years ago. Stacy with CMPD, you also have your two sons out here today. First of all, thank you for your service. Thank you for keeping our city safe. We appreciate you being here today and talking with us. Thank you. You were in 11th grade yes. when this happened. Yes. You, you know, were not yet serving, right? I was not. Why are you here today? So just like you had mentioned before, um, these are the people who have made the ultimate sacrifice. They were running into the building when everybody was running out. And because of that, we need to make sure that we never do forget that those people gave the ultimate sacrifice, that their families gave the ultimate sacrifice. Um, so really, I'm here today just because I'm here to remember, I'm here to tell my kids, you know, that even though they weren't there and they weren't born yet, that people do give their lives for the freedoms that they have today. Yeah, absolutely. You know how it is to be the first to respond to an emergency situation. Yes. So again, we thank you for your service. We thank you for being here today. It's a crazy world that we live in, yes. right? Absolutely. And I think um, we saw the country come together 20 years ago, um, um, like never before. And so what is your message today? Today, I would really just, for everyone just to take a moment and remember the people who did sacrifice their lives um, on this day 20 years ago. Um, put the differences aside mm -hmm. and just really come together as not only the city of Charlotte, but as a country as a whole. Yeah, you bet. Uh, 83 different groups out here today. We are, uh, we're told that there's a group of pilots out here today, Derek. So um, there's police officers, there's paramedics, there's, of course, firefighters. 586 registered climbers. That's a little bit less than we typically see at the stair climb, but that is, of course, because of COVID-19. We have to make sure everybody stays safe. I want to kind of give you an idea of how this is going to work today here at Truist Field. The starting line is right here. 
Now, there's two different ways you can do this. Most people are not counting the steps that it takes to get down. So, 110 floors, that is what we are climbing today. Uh, we are actually gonna suit up and climb with the fi firefighters and first responders here. You're gonna go down and then up. You're gonna go around this stadium six times in order to uh, make sure that we're climbing 100 and 10 different floors. So a uh, very somber day out here, but also Derek, I want, I want you to know it's a celebration of life. And we were really seeing that today. One other thing I wanna point out, every time someone comes around with a lanyard, with a life they're celebrating, they're going to ring this bell. And that is to honor those who gave the ultimate sacrifice, uh, who, who never turned back. They went straight into that building, those buildings. They saved lives on the streets. They did whatever they had to do because they knew that that was their duty. And, and again, we celebrate them today. I'm gonna tell you more about Raymond Suarez. Uh, he is who I'm climbing for today. And um, I will give you more on him and his life and, and all that he sacrificed uh, when we see you in a bit. For now though, we will toss it back to you. All right, a great way to remember and reflect this morning. Thank you, Lauren. You're now taking a live look at New York City and One World Trade Center on the right side of your screen there. A memorial ceremony, including the reading of the victims' names, starts at 8.30 this morning, less than 20 minutes from right now. Today, we mark 20 years since one of the most tragic events in American history. 2,977 people died in the worst terror attack in U.S. history. It was three hours that changed the world forever. This day, 20 years ago, America came under attack. On the morning of September 11, 2001, at 7.59, American Airlines Flight 11 took off from Logan International Airport in Boston. 15 minutes later, United Airlines Flight 175 also took off from Boston. Within an hour of each, everyone on board those planes was killed. At 8.46, Flight 11 crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. The South Tower was hit minutes later at 9.03. Two minutes later, President Bush was informed. His chief of staff said to him, quote, a second plane hit the second tower. America is under attack. At 930, the president addressed the nation for the first time that day. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. At 9.37, American Airlines Flight 77 hit the Pentagon. 184 people were killed. Five minutes later, all flights across the country were grounded. At 9.59, the South Tower of the World Trade Center collapsed in just 10 seconds. The North Tower fell at 10.28 after burning for over an hour and a half. First responders worked tirelessly throughout the day, trying to find survivors in the rubble. At 8.30 that night, President Bush addressed the nation once more. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The victims were in airplanes or in their offices, secretaries, businessmen and women, military and federal workers, moms and dads, friends and neighbors. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil, despicable acts of terror. America was targeted for attack because we're the brightest beacon for freedom and opportunity in the world. Tonight, I ask for your prayers for all those who grieve, for the children whose worlds have been shattered, for all whose sense of safety and security has been threatened. We are nearing 815 now the memorial stair climb opening ceremony is about to get underway here in a minute or so our Lauren McDonald is live in uptown Lauren uh, you can tell us a little bit about uh, what we can expect here in the next few minutes yeah, that's right, Derek. Uh, as I said, uh, first time that this event has been held at Truist Field, formerly in the Duke Energy Building. I'm here actually with Bill uh, Southern this morning with Huntersville Fire Department. Uh, thanks for having us out today. We appreciate it. Um, you kind of helped organize this event. I know it takes uh, a collective group to make something like this possible, but what can we expect out here today? Well, it's a beautiful day to climb, So, and it's different because we're not in a tower. We're actually in a stadium. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's our first year doing it, so I really don't know what to expect, but I know you're going to see a lot of motivated folks that never want to forget 
20 years ago what happened on this day, 9-11-2001. Absolutely. And they're paying tribute today. It's going to be a lot of sweat, a lot of love, and probably some tears. Yeah, you bet. And, and that really is the message. Never forget. That's what you're trying to uh, kind of let the world know, right? Yes, we will never forget Absolutely. the people that made the ultimate yeah. sacrifice. So I want to talk about the gear. A lot of firefighters um, hike in their gear. Um, you actually are letting me borrow some of your stuff today because we're going to climb. Uh, we use this. We even have the tank. This gear equals up to about 60 pounds, yes, right? About 60 pounds that we carry every day. Like exactly. Those. And, you know, we're trying the best we can to kind of, you know, emulate what they what they had to carry up those stairs, but not even close to what no, they not, experienced. Not even close. They had no idea what they were up against. They didn't even they didn't, they didn't think about it twice. Mm -hmm. Put all their gear on. They were carrying hoses, too. Yeah. They started in tools and they started climbing the towers and um, never thought twice. Never thought and, twice. Uh, you know, by 10 a.m., we're going to have, you know, 20 years ago, over 3,000 folks that didn't exist anymore. It, it's, it's sad, but uh, we're going to try to finish the climb that they could not finish. A retired NYPD officer and first responder on 9-11 who now lives in Waxhaw says it's his job to keep talking about that day. He shares what he saw, heard, and felt 20 years ago. WCCB's Morgan Fogarty has the story. The only way I can describe it is hell on earth. Frank DeMasi was an NYPD officer in the emergency service unit on September 11, 2001. He raced to the scene when the first plane flew into the World Trade Center. He was in Lower Manhattan when the second plane hit. Even two or three blocks away, I can feel the heat on the back of my neck. As he made his way toward the towers, he saw and heard things no one should. People jumping from the towers. They decided at a certain point that what's behind me is a worse scenario than jumping. And I can't imagine a human being having to make that decision. How could jumping out of the 90th floor ever be a better decision as to what's behind you? Devasi was just minutes away from going into the towers when they collapsed. As a debris cloud chased people away, Demasi took cover under a truck. For nine minutes, he waited and wondered if he would suffocate. Pitch black on that sunny day. You couldn't see your hand in front of your face. I, I really thought I was going to die under that truck. Demasi crawled out and went back to what was left of the towers. 23 NYPD officers died that day. 14 were in Demasi's unit. We were, we, were, we were family. We were brothers. In the following weeks and months, Demasi worked to find survivors and then body parts. It would be cause for excitement as if you found someone because we knew some family's going to have closure. Someone will have something to bury of their loved one, a mother, a father, son or daughter. Demasi set up this table in his home 18 years ago. A cross made from tower steel, a bolt and glass from the towers, and this thin piece of metal from the plane that hit the South Tower. He says he used to wonder why his 14 friends were killed and he wasn't. Now he's settled on this. Maybe I was here for a reason, and maybe I am here to continue their legacy and talk about them and tell people my story in hopes that they never forget that day. Morgan Fogarty, WCCB News. Overnight, New York City also paying tribute to the victims of 9-11. This is the Tribute in Light. It reaches four miles into the air. Many buildings throughout New York, including the Empire State Building and One World Trade Center, lit up in sky blue. Years ago, we take you now live to New York City. You see uh, President Joe Biden uh, there right now. They're going to be uh, reading the victims of the names, the tolling of the bell at uh, ground zero and we can tell you that uh, the president and first lady jill biden are visiting all three sites where the attacks unfolded the world trade center in new york the pentagon outside dc and the field near shanksville pennsylvania where united airlines flight 93 crashed with the morning's memorial ceremony underway in new york we go to wccb charlotte's camila bernal live in new york city good morning camila Hey Derek, good morning. Just about 10 minutes from now, we will have the first moment of silence and that will be representing that time when the first airplane crashed into the North Tower here in New York City. So really a somber and difficult day here in New York as we remember and honor nearly 3,000 lives that were lost. 
And Camila, you mentioned uh, the reading of the, the names, and this is basically a return to the typical ceremony at the World Trade Center site. After last year, they used uh, pre-recorded audio for the reading of the names due to COVID-19. What else is on the schedule this morning? Right, so it is interesting that you mentioned that because finally we're sort of returning back to normal, at least when it comes to this ceremony. So I mentioned the moment of silence at 8.46 in the morning. That will sort of be uh, the starting point, but there are six different moments of silence. Four of them will represent the exact times when those airplanes crashed. And then the other two will represent the moment uh, that those towers collapsed. So in between those moments of silence is when we will hear the names being read. There will be some remarks, of course, the national anthem, bagpipes, all of it to honor and remember those lives lost. Derek. Well, like you, uh, I've watched and read a lot this week, as have our viewers at home. And one thing that stands out is the number killed on 9-11 who have never been identified. It's still over 1,100 people. Is that process still underway? It is, and it is incredible to think about this. There's about 40% of the victims that still to this day, 20 years later, have never been identified. Just a couple of days ago, the medical examiner here in New York announcing two victims identified. And so there's still a lot of work to be done here, but the medical examiner promising that they will continue to work on identifying these victims for as long as it takes. Uh, this is all thanks to obviously developments in science and in DNA research, uh, but there is still a lot of work to be done. And, and this is the biggest and most complex forensic investigation in U.S. history. So still a lot of families waiting for their loved one to be identified. And like I said, it's likely going to take some time. And unfortunately, some of these families might never get that closure. The hope is that some of these families can conduct some sort of burial for their loved ones if a DNA match is made. Camila Bernal in New York City, thank you. Let's look live at uh, Ground Zero right now as the ceremony is underway. The moment of silence we just shared marks the very moment 20 years ago that American Airlines Flight 11 flew into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. My name is Mike Lowe and my daughter Sarah Elizabeth Lowe.
As we continue uh, to watch the scene there in New York, that was our first moment of silence of the day, marking when the first plane crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. As you can see here on the screen, there will be several other moments of silence observed throughout the day. The next is at 9.03 when the South Tower was struck, followed by 9.37 when the Pentagon was hit, then another at 9.59 when the South Tower of the World Trade Center fell. There will be a moment of silence at 10.03. That marks when Flight 93 crashed in Shanksville. And the final moment of silence at 10.28 this morning, marking the collapse of the North Tower in New York. Today, the Charlotte Knights are honoring first responders and the fallen to commemorate this 20th anniversary of September 11th. Two weeks after that fateful day in 2001, Knights manager Wes Helms played a special role in bringing sports back to the country. WCCB Zach Aldridge has the story. It's something you never forget, but it was a special moment. The day the sports world resumed play following the September 11th terrorist attacks, Charlotte Knights manager Wes Helms was right there in New York as a member of the Atlanta Braves. To be the first professional sports team or any sports team to play in New York City after 9-11, uh, you know, it was pretty special. Shea Stadium, September 21st, 2001. Helms vividly remembers the game against the Mets, especially the national anthem, when the gravity of the moment began to sink in. I'm standing there on the third baseline, and you know the Mets are on the first baseline, and you just kind of look around and you see grown men tearing up, and that right there is when it kind of sit with us, like, wow, this is really special. Helms and his Braves lost three to two in dramatic fashion, but that was all right with them. We came in the clubhouse, and I was playing with my Bobby Cox with the manager, and. You know, he pulled us together and he said, you know, guys, you'll never hear me talk about losing. I hate losing. I hate it with a passion. But I wanted them to win that game tonight. The city of New York needed that. The Mets needed that. Zach Aldridge, WCCB Sports. We now go back live to Lauren McDonald at Truist Field in Uptown Charlotte with more on how the Charlotte Knights are honoring first responders today. Good morning again, Lauren. Yeah, that's right, guys. Good morning. Good morning, Derek. Uh, we are here at Truist Field, 9-11 Memorial Stair Climb. First time it's ever been held here at Truist Field. Local first responders, local firefighters, and just uh, civilians from the community out this morning. You can hear uh, them ringing a bell for each time they pass because they are starting their climb right now, and everyone is climbing for someone. But the message is never forget, and we also celebrate the lives of the people who were killed in those attacks, 2,900 77 innocent people and you can see uh, people showing up here to Truist Field all different groups of people there are firefighters there are police officers there are paramedics there are pilots there are crossfitters there is a rugby team there are people from the community that just come out every year and they pay their respects uh, that's going to do it for us here at Truist Field but uh, Derek as I toss it back to you I'm going to gear up and uh, get ready to climb 110 steps and we touch every single one. Love it. A beautiful sight of unity there out at the ballpark. Thank Slide you, there. Lauren. Well, well thank you for climb. joining us for our special coverage here this morning, remembering 9-11 20 years later. Make sure to tune in tonight to the news at 6 and 10 for more coverage of today's local and national 9-11 memorial ceremonies. There are several others happening today from Charlotte Motor Speedway to Gastonia. They have a ceremony getting underway at 945 this morning. We'll also have video and photo galleries from the Flags of Remembrance ceremony and the stair climb at WCCBCharlotte.com. Before we leave you with uh, this from September 13th, 2001, this is when a crowd came together to honor and remember the victims and heroes in the aftermath of tragedy. Thanks for joining us. Jesus.